Good morning, or I should say good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you guys doing? Welcome in. We're talking about marrying the one that wants you and avoiding that struggle life. I'm gonna give you guys a, a chance to hop on. Let me know that you can see me and hear me. This is a member only chat. If you would like to become a member of the Level Up Queens, which is my YouTube membership, there is a join button underneath this video that you can click, um, or you can go into the description box and hit the link next to Level Up Queens. So that's the way to join in. Hi, Tish. Okay, great. So you, I'm assuming you can hear me and see me and we'll get started. So I wanna do a little bit of a, a, a training of a mindset that we in the Eastern principle, like in the Eastern culture, culture have about relationships and dating and marriage and, and children, and hopefully kind of bridge that gap of what's really going on and where that disconnect is in the Western culture when we're looking to, to do dating, right, and, and marriage. The first thing that I must say is you must realize that what is happening in the Western world currently is a experiment. So you, if you live in any of the Western modernized societies, you are an experiment. Meaning the way that you live, the way that you breathe, the way that you eat, the way that you date, the way that you marry and have children has never been done by homo sapiens before. There is no history of it. And there are obviously cons and pros to this experiment, right? As with any experiment, First, there's going to be some cons and pros to that. So the, the, the pros are obvious, right? Like we have created this beautiful structure and system of prosperity in the Western culture. That's why people from the Eastern culture want to come here so desperately because in the Eastern cultures, I mean, this has now changed in Japan, of course, and in other cultures as well, but I think Japan seems to be leading this. They've got, they already have their relationships and all of that stuff down. And now they're building the structures and systems or they're coming here. So you, my dear, are wired for prosperity. You're wired for independence. You're wired for fairness. You are wired to be good little girls and boys and good little members of society. How this plays out for your health, how this plays out for your relationships, how this plays out for your overall well-being, is yet to be determined. And I think it's being quickly determined that it's not looking well. So for those of you guys watching live uh, in the chat, uh, let me know if you understand what I mean when I say it's not looking good. <laughs> There's a lot of confusion, but it is an experiment. When you change things, when they have never been done that way and you change things, you must know the consequences that there are going to be some some you know, consequences to that, and that's okay, as long as you know. The problem is that people in the Western societies don't know that they are part of an experiment. They don't know that this is not how we've lived. Some people are waking up. I am lucky, one of the lucky ones that I woke up early. Otherwise, I would have completely destroyed my life and the life of my, my son. I only had one son at that time when I woke up, but you know, I have three children. So this this matters right like it, you need to know and it's okay to be a part of an experiment like if you went and you signed up for an experiment uh, at a university they would have you sign an agreement they would have you become aware of the potential risks right but you and i uh, are part of an experiment where we do we don't know the potential risks until it's too late so that is what has been going on right? I was speaking to a client last week and actually mentioned this to two clients last week. And one of them, I remember gasped <laughs> when I said this. Um, and the other one was like, wow, that is unreal. Is that the out of wedlock, out of wedlock child rate in Pakistan, in the Pakistani culture is zero. When I said this, one of my clients gasped. She's like, what? She's like, do you know how it is how high it is in my community. I'm like, I am well aware. And I'm mentioning this because it's, this isn't like 
how it's not like something that has to be right. It's just a cultural thing. It, people in different cultures behave different way because there's different systems that they are required to behave in. That's the culture, right? So at any given time, you can make a different decision. You can make a different choice and you can have different results. It's, it's as simple as that. You have the power to change. You have the power to say, well, obviously uh, this hasn't been working for me. It hasn't been working for a lot of people around me. It hasn't been working for a lot of people that I don't even know, but just based on the divorce rate and the confusion rate of dating, huh? I wonder why we do it this way. Just simply asking yourself that question can start opening up that door of like, why do we do it this way? And you'll quickly realize that that is a new phenomena. We've never done it this way. Oops, I am, I apologize. I'm having some technical glitches. Okay, seems to be better now. All right, let me see what you guys are saying and then I'll continue the training. Hi, Christian, Tish, welcome. Hi, Nicole. She said, oh yes, I agree. Christian said, yes, so much confusion. Yes, because we've, we've changed the rules of the game and then we're like, oh, this isn't working. Well, yeah, it's we've never done it this way, right? There's gonna be a huge learning curve if you change something. Like think of it this way, this is a food example, but uh, do you know that when animals are in, in a, when they take animals out of the wild and they put them in the zoo, they then um, must feed it a certain diet, right? They must feed it the diet that closely resembles, resembles the diet that they had in the wild. If they do not, then there is consequences. So let's say that an animal is placed in the zoo and it starts shedding hair or it starts acting violently or it stops wanting to mate. Well, the zookeepers know that this is odd behavior for the species because that's not how it behaves in the wild. Otherwise that species would have died. So what do they do? They go back to the wild or they consult experts that know about that species from the wild and they figure out how that species was living in the wild. What, how, what was the living arrangements? What was it eating? How is it behaving? What was the mating rituals and, and you know, rites of passage and things like that? And then they try to mimic that in the zoo to keep the animal healthy. Well, if an alien species came down and it had the ability to look at the, the two million year Homo sapien history, okay? And then, and then it also had a, a opportunity to look at the planet right now, all the other cultures, and then like how we're doing things in certain parts of Europe and the United States, it would, it would realize what had happened. That these people have forgotten how we were behaving and living and acting in the wild. Okay, so it's it's simply figuring out what how we've behaved and done it, and then quickly going back to that. Okay, you your mindset has to go first. So one of the things that I'm teaching, I'm teaching this this process and this entire way in the Alchemy and Ascension New Year Intensive that's happening on January 22nd. Uh, it is linked in the description box. I'll also throw it in the chat for you guys, and we're going to be talking about how to, you literally have to rewire your brain. You literally have to rewire your brain. There are parts of your brain that you have stopped using because they are not required in the Western cultures. And as you understand how, you know, the brain works, if you don't use it, you lose it, right? If you don't use certain parts, they become dormant. The neural networks in those uh, regions become less and less and less, and then they disappear because obviously that part of the brain is not needed. So when you have the parts of your brain that are activated and optimized for, to be good little girls and boys that can behave in a industrial, you know, competitive, consumerist, uh, capitalist environment, and you try to bring those skill sets to a relationship, it doesn't work. It doesn't work unless you can run your household like a business and like give each other very uh, clear assigned roles and do the whole like tit for tat, 50-50. You know, if you can do that, you can make it work. 
But as you can understand, both of you will feel very deeply unmet because the parts of the brain that are required for computing and logic and being great at your career are very, very, very different than the parts that are required to be empathetic, compassionate, and feeling loved in reciprocal ways, giving love in reciprocal ways, feeling met in a relationship, being able to receive what the masculine has to give and being able to give your feminine gifts, very different skill sets, very different skill sets. But it has to begin with your brain because most of you are so, you, you know, when you even come in contact with this, with this contact, or content, your first thing is like, well, he has to change or they have to change or there's no good man or like, it's, it's a very kind of competitive, um, combative, right? Like very, like something's wrong with everyone else. Or some of you guys are going, I'm just broken. My mom did this to me and my dad and right. So it has to begin with you realizing that is just a brain wiring that you never got a chance to develop. That's it. And the good news is that the brain is highly plastic, highly plastic, right? So you can change this at any time. Yes, it will take a little bit of practice, of course, because every time we learn something new, you have to wire your brain for that. So it's a little bit of repetition. But once you start activating and firing those new neurons, those neural pathways, that will become your normal way of behaving, okay? Good afternoon, Mina. Good afternoon, ladies. So glad to be here on this journey. Welcome, Nicole. So happy to hear, have you, babe. Okay, so it, it's it's a lot of the problems that we think exist in relationships and we think it's because of someone else are simply that we are not wired to even see what's in front of us. We already know this from brain uh, you know, studies now that when you are when you're not wired to see certain things, they can be right in front of you and you won't even see them. That's why Western brains are more uh, likely to you know, fall prey to those optical illusion things that they show us, right? Like you've, you've done, a lot of you guys have done those. You know what I'm talking about, okay? It's very hard to reprogram that mindset and that's if we even realize it. It's not hard, it's very consistent. It's very predictable. Wiring the brain, it's very predictable. It's, a, it's down to a very specific science. So it's actually not very hard at all. It's your focus. The, heart, the, the thing that Westerners struggle with is focus. We're distracted. We're distracted with social media. We're distracted with living our old ways, right? It's very easy to keep going back to what's familiar. But the actual neuroscience of like how to reprogram your brain, it's very easy. It's actually quite simple. Okay, You've probably heard many neuroscientists saying the simple phrase of neurons that wire together, of neurons that fire together, wire together. So you have to know that there's certain things that you don't know and certain things that you're not seeing, right? They're, they're in front of you. You're not seeing them because you're trained. You have been trained since birth to be good little boys and girls get, that can sit in classrooms, score high you know, on the test, get your work done on time, and then sit in a cubicle for nine to five. Fairness, being good citizens, that's what we've been trained for. That's, you can imagine my confusion when my parents were taking me back and forth between the Western world and the Eastern world. When I would see people over there, it was just like a culture shock. Like those people eat differently, they behave differently, they move differently, they speak differently, they have different relationships. Women there don't care about the things women here care about and vice versa. So as a little girl, I was very confused. It was like two different worlds. Their brains are just wired differently because different wirings is required for what is considered success in that culture. So you and I have this wonderful opportunity to say, okay, well, what kind of a life do I want from this buffet of different brain wirings that are available? And what do I need to do to wire my brain for the thing that I want? Okay. Uh, it's the man versus self-conflict. 
I've never heard of that. That sounds in interesting, Kristen. Welcome, Heather, to the Level of Queens. Nice to have you. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about um, relationships and how to marry the one that wants you. Okay, this is a big thing that's different in the in the way the Eastern culture does relating and relationships. So let me share with you where did I get this concept of rota rotational dating? Like, how did I know that I was supposed to date this way? So many of you guys are familiar with my story. I obviously messed it up the first time. My Western brain did it the Western way, and that did not pan out good. It was, in fact, kind of a huge disaster. So the second time around, when God gave me another chance, I was like, okay, God, I am listening. I am going to do this the way my culture does this with my own modern twist, of course, because I am born and raised in the United States. And so I wrote down the entire way and system of my culture, my parents' culture, the Pakistani culture does dating. So the way they do dating is the way uh, most religions and most cultures used to do dating. It's courting, okay? So in this, so I wrote down the entire way that they did it. Some of the things really triggered me, okay? So then some things were super triggering because it was like my American brain was saying, well, no, you know, this doesn't work or this won't work or they're going to think X, Y, Z. But it was like, okay, no, right now we're just studying and I'm just writing down exactly how it's done in my culture. And I talked to my mom. I talked to some other relatives. I had a my, one of my best friends at the time, his older sister had the kind of marriage that I desired. Her and her, hus her, and her husband had like the divine union that I wanted. I picked her brain. It's like, how did you guys meet? How did it work? Oh, okay. So he did it the traditional way. He had to go to your dad. Okay. What did your dad ask him? I spoke to my dad, right? So I started gathering all this information. And then I said, okay, how do I make this work? in a American setting with my American mind. And so that's when my first rotational dating experiment began on myself, okay? And just in a, in a few short months of starting this experiment, I had a ring on my finger. And of course my friends were like, what? But you're a single mom, but you blah, 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 but this, but you're divorced. You don't get to have that. I do. I just, well, how did you do it? I just followed what our ancestors have been saying. Okay. Turns out it, this isn't just part of my culture. As you guys know, in college, I studied evolution, anthropology, psychology. Turns out that this is how our species have always made it. So it's not like my culture invented this and then I brought it here. Evolution adapted to this over millions of years, my culture never changed out of it. Simple as that. My culture just that never changed out of it. Pakistan is a relatively new country. It's a, it used to be a part of India. And India is very much still grounded and rooted in tradition. Parts of it, you know, it's very evolved, obviously, and, and modernized. But at the root of their being is culture and spirituality. So they never evolved out of it. And so it's not like the, you know, these people invented something new. They just didn't break the thing that, that was working. Okay. Hi, Healing Light. Happy to have you. It comes from character analysis in fiction writing. Oh, okay. Interesting. Heather said, it's a joy to be learning this alongside my own daughter. Beautiful. Beautiful. Those, welcome. She said, hey, beautiful. Your message resonates so much with me. Many of your principles I have followed unconsciously. And now that I listen to you, I realize it's nature to us. Yes. Yes. You just, you basically didn't have anything to unlearn, right? Like you, it's like, if you weren't doing thing, if you didn't learn the Western principle, you would have already known this in the depth of your core. That's why when women come to my work, it's so easy to awaken because they remember their DNA remembers. We are women. We are the more attractive sex. Relationships come very easily and naturally to us. Finding a man isn't a problem for us. Keeping men at bay is a problem. We have laws 
because men love to be around women. Men love touching women. Men want to please women. Men want to provide for women. That's why we have laws against some predators, right? Because it's such a natural thing. So why in the one part of the world where they broke out of the way we've always done it, there was so much confusion. Why? Once you wake up to this, it's like it, you, you realize how ridiculous it is. You realize how being confused about relations for, for a woman is so ridiculous because relationships have always been our domain. They come easy. Okay. In, in the Eastern culture, men like wait outside a woman's home just to be able to see one glimpse of her. Women do not chase men at all. They don't need to. They need to hide. Why do you think women cover themselves up so much in Eastern cultures? Men want them so badly that they have to hide themselves. Okay. That's what it means to be a woman. Men want you. There's lines of men wanting you. You get to choose the one that you want. So how do you choose? How do we do it in the Eastern culture? So this is what I want to talk about today. So I want you to start rewiring your brain and thinking about relationships as a forever lifestyle. Okay, this is very different than the way that our American and Western brain has been programmed to think. In the Western culture, we've been programmed to think that there's like this pillar of success and like all these little things we have to put in the basket and marriage is just this one more thing that we put in. We're trying to use the same skills needed in, you know, getting a job or mastering your, you know, college degree, trying to use that in relationships. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. So I, I want you to stop thinking about relationships as one more thing that you add to your success bucket, one more thing you check off your to-do list, and start thinking of it as a foundation for your forever lifestyle. It's the, it's the concrete that you lay out as the foundation, okay? So if you are in your 20s and the human lifespan is 100, we're, th we're talking about 80 years. Okay, 80 years. This is a lifestyle that will last you 80 years. Granted, both of you live to 100. If you're in your 30s, we're down to 70 years. That's still a lot. Okay, 40s, that's 60 years. So this is a long term game plan. Long term. So the partner that we choose, we are not choosing this partner based on how they make us feel today. That would be kind of dumb because we're thinking about 70 years. And in 70 years, you as a woman will evolve through many seasons of life. Okay, you're, you're going to learn new things. You're going to shed the skin that you're in right now and have different skin. You're going to have your, your cells will change in your body. You may become a mother in, in this 70 years. You may you know, raise your children and they may go off and get married themselves and you may become a grandmother, right? Like there's gonna be so many different seasons that are going to see you through this foundation. So this foundation cannot be rocky. It cannot be unstable. I would say that if we're looking at 70 years, if you're in your 20s, Okay, so we're talking you know, 40 to 70 years, depending on your age. This foundation needs to be rock solid. It needs to be robust. It needs your undivided attention. It needs to be a priority in your life, wouldn't you say? Thank you, Katrina. Thank you for the super chat. She said, such a joy listening to your great content live sometimes and experiencing the community, Nina. Much love. Thank you, babe. Thank you so much. Uh, this feels good. Okay. Awesome, Nicole. I'm so happy. It's been 10 years from that. And we just remarried last May and reconnecting with my feminine essence. Ina's teachings mean so much to me and have helped my marriage become yummier. Yes. Yes. Okay. So this person that we're choosing, this partner, this partner 
It does not matter how hot they look today. Why? Who wants to tell me in the chat? Because will their behavior and will the person that they evolve into, will this person still be hot 30 years in, 40 years in, 60 years in, 70 years in? Will they still be hot? That changes the game, right? As we age and we go through different things in life that everyone goes through, right? People go through childbirth and aging parents and burying their parents, right? And then you go through your children's, you know, school stuff. Then you go through, you know, God forbid, illnesses. There's a lot of things that you must uphold with this person. Because like we said, we've already established this is a long game. The Eastern culture knows this and they understand this. So they, they value relationships from the get-go. So relationships are something that everyone is trained in, is groomed in. They become like the foundation of everything else. Your job, you'll change your job. You may even retire one day. Foundation, nope, it's the one you've got, okay? So that, it's, that's why they call it a marriage of two cultures or uh, two families, because the, you now, these people now share DNA with your children. You'll be making very important decisions in your children's life. So all of this needs to be factored in. So you need a partner that is equally committed to growing with you and keeping this foundation robust. That's, that needs to be the number one value from now on on your love list needs to be someone who's equally committed. And if you are in the Western culture, you have to understand that you and him will both be rewiring each other's brains together towards this because you may not, there's a couple of skips in the generation, right? There's a couple of skips where people were in survival. I don't blame my parents for, for breaking certain rules. They were in survival because they, they had to leave their country and come here. They didn't have to, they chose to leave their country and come here. And they chose to give, you know, make certain sacrifices so their children could have better education and better systems and better prosperity. But they shook up the foundation of relationships a little bit for us too. We had to get our bearings around that. Lucky for me that they were taking me back and forth so I could see the contrast, okay? So when it comes to values, you need someone that is equally committed to fighting this, this battle of life and walking this walk with you for 70 years. Okay, and you also need to avoid, here's a, here's a you job, another you job. You need to avoid, avoid things that make you stupid. Say it with me. I need to avoid, avoid doing things in relationships in the dating phase that make me stupid. Okay, so let me give you an example of this. Let's say that your best friend had this very important court date. It was like life and death court date kind of situation. And they called you up the night before asking you to go out partying with them, go out drinking, okay? At like 11 p.m. and they've got this court date the next morning at eight. What would be your response? What would you say? Okay, I know my response. I would be like, babe, are you nuts? No, I think you need to tuck yourself into bed, get your eight hours of sleep or however many you have left now, Make sure you get your good rest so you are active the next day, like you are on your game, right? I would advise my friend to please don't do anything stupid right now that's going to make you intoxicated or in a, or like lack of sleep or so, anything that will not help you make a good decision tomorrow, right? W would you not do the same? Let me know in the chat if you agree, okay? What if your friend called you from Vegas and said, that her and her boyfriend that she met two days ago that you know is bad news based on her picking history, that they're both drunk and they're two seconds away from getting married 
and they called you because they wanted you to be the first person to know, what would you say to her? Okay, you try to convince her to make sure that she is not intoxicated when she signs those papers, right? Because anything that makes you stupid, you are not making your decisions 100%, right? Well, the way that the Western culture has set up dating makes you damn stupid. Makes you damn stupid when you are making the most important foundational decision of your life. The one that's supposed to last 70 to 80 years. Okay. You, you, you go for chemistry. Okay. You go for sleeping together right off the bat. All the things that make you dumb, you do right before making the most important decision of your life. And let's dissect this. Why am I saying that marriage is the most important decision of your life? So when I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, I was forced to study different fields in, in curing my own, my health. I did not want to end up like a lot of my relatives and especially not like my mom who died from cancer at 49 at, at her prime. Okay. So one of the things that you guys know, I studied nutrition and different things. One of the things that I ended up studying was stress. And stress is like the godmother of all our problems. Okay. We think problems cause stress, but actually stress causes problems. Stress causes so many problems. Do you know that when you are under stress, you breathe differently, which sends a different heart, which sends a different signal to your micro gut biome, which sends a different signal to your brain, which either upregulates or downregulates your genome. Okay. And this is very important when it comes to relationships, because if you end up marrying someone that causes you stress, even if it's just one stressful moment every day, the effects of that last for hours, hours. So the person that you are married to can cause you to age faster, can cause you to get a host of diseases, can cause you to live in fight or flight for the rest of your life, can cause you to for your, can cause your heart to give up way earlier than it needs to because it's already working harder than it needs to because of the stress that they're causing. They can cause you to get more wrinkles. I think I mentioned aging, but this is important. Hello, we're women. We want to look nice. It causes you to have inflammation in your body. It, it causes, it, the, the person that you marry, 50% of their DNA instantly, instantly gets downloaded into your children. Now, the stress that you are under, you infect your children. Did you know that when you are living in a stress, when you are living with a stressful person, you are instantly inherit their stress? So if you are stressed out because of your partner, your children are immediately stressed out. And I'm, this isn't some science, some woo-woo spiritual thing. This is actual science. They've studied this. So you choosing per, a person under intoxication of chemicals, dumb, stupid, your entire genome has changed. Because your children, the children they have, the children they have. The, so the decision that you make impacts the future of humanity. I, I want you to let that sink in. What we have done where we are now reproducing with men who are not providers, who are not healthy, we have no idea what the consequences of this is long-term. We have changed the human DNA. Do you guys realize that? We, we had a system, homo sapiens had a system to ensure that certain people procreated and had children. And so 
That's why we are the most powerful species on the planet. There was a reason for it. Now we've broken some rules and we've started saying, screw the hunter, screw the strongest man. We'll just go ahead and take this lazy one right here that doesn't do anything good. You know, what's the harm? Just have a baby with him. See how it goes. We've never done this before. Okay, The reason that the out of wedlock rate in the Pakistani culture is zero is because you don't get to have children unless you can get a job, keep a job, you know, be a, ma a family man and ask a woman for her hand, for her family, prove who you are and then get married and then you have sex and then you have children. There is a system which homo sapiens have always followed. So this is important stuff. We can't wing this. <laughs> Okay, we need to stop acting like no big deal. We we had to cut it out. Okay. Oh my gosh, Vina, you dropped my the you dropped the bomb of truth on us. So true. Oh my god, yes, this is huge. Yes, women are the gene police. Yes, yes. I lived that as a child. My parents were immigrants too, and they were on survival mode. Thank God, my grandma always told me that it was in my best interest to choose a supporting, caring partner. Yeah, for the entire human destiny. The faith of humanity has always been in the hands of women. We chose whose genes passed on into the future. This is a huge responsibility. Remember Spider-Man? <laughs> Spider-Man, with great responsibility. Wait, what is it? With great power comes great responsibility. This is, this take, it's a responsibility. Making, making this dumb decision changes the human genome. Changes your life for sure, and then your children's life, then their children's life, then their children's life. And then the things that we do under stress impact other people. People who are repeatedly under stress and then choose to become alcoholics, and then drunk drive, kill people. I mean, do you see the compound effect? The, the effect of all of our cumulative decisions. So this is an important decision. We cannot act like we're just winging marriage. Oh, he's so cute and oh my goodness, I feel you know, so amazing with him. Those that cannot be the decision. Will you still feel amazing with his decisions 70 years in? My, my grandmother used to say, it doesn't matter if you love him when you marry him. Did you love him when you died? Is the only thing that matters. <laughs> that was, those were literally her words. As long as you die in love, that's it. That's what matters. She didn't care how you felt about him when you got married. So choose values that only get better with age. Choose values that only get better. So I ask you this question now. If you know that this is a long game, this is a you know, 50, 60, 70 year game, depending on your age, what would be key values to have, right? So I know for me, I'm thinking, okay, I want someone, I want someone that's a, a man of integrity. I want someone that's consistent, right? I want someone that's patient because 70 years is a long time. And, and here's the thing with integrity, consistency, and patience. It only gets better with age because we, we already know in 70 years, our skin isn't necessarily going to be looking the same, right? Maybe both of us will be a little hunched down and elderly and all that beautiful stuff that comes from age, right? We already know that. So I'm not going to base my decisions on his swagger, right? Because he's not going to be walking with that swagger 70 years in. He might be using a cane. So the decisions that we are, the, even the things that people put on their love list is coming so much from that industrialized success, like productive success-driven Western brain. Can you see that? 
And I'm, I'm including myself in this. I was just the same as everyone else. So it's a whole different paradigm. You're gonna have to start thinking differently. You're going to have to start asking different questions. Choose values that only get better with age. Key values, honesty, patience, masculinity, maturity, growth-minded, financially stable. Yes, yes, ma'am. Because those things only get better with age. So when women start, you know, why did I title this, marry the one that wants you and avoid the struggle life? In the Western culture, oftentimes it's like, we're in this chase. We have to convince people how great we are. How many, Look at my degrees. Look what I can do. Look, I can cook for you. I can do this for you, right? I, I'm, I'll, I'll be such a good partner. So we're reversing this, this thing of like being in, I, I talk, you know, I've talked about this before calling it the one noun position. You have to get yourself out of this. You are the gene police, okay? You are in the, in the position where you're bringing your womb, your energy, your positivity, your mindset, like you are going to keep each other healthy through 70 years, right? You're gonna, you're gonna take his house and turn it into a home. You're going to take half his DNA and turn it into a human being. So you bring this and you want the one that wants you, the one that wants to invest in you, the one that wants to do this long game, the 70 years. But the interesting thing is that it's almost like in the Western culture, women have been wired to, to be turned off from the one that wants us. Oh, he's too needy, he's too this, he's too blah, 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 he's too boring. If he's not gonna drag me through the mud, I don't want him. Right? Or they'll go and they'll go look at the 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 people that wouldn't have even made it into the genome. <laughs> Sorry, I know it sounds harsh, but the people that were raised by the, the dads that ran away or the dads that didn't want to provide the mom, the ones that the mom chased, and then taking them and saying they don't want to get married. It's them. There's stop looking at that pool. Choose the one that wants you. This is serious stuff. It is. It is. The DNA you plug into your future children, that's serious. It is. It is serious business. Who you live with impacts your stress. Just establish that. How you age is not dependent so much on the creams that you put on your face, but the person you're sleeping next to every evening. Did you know that even your gut microbiome is influenced by that person's gut microbiome? This was one of the fascinating things. When I was studying gut microbiome, I was shocked to learn that it travels. <laughs> I was like, oh, babe, you gotta eat healthier. <laughs> uh, excuse me, your, your gut microbiome is getting on me. Get off of me. <laughs> I'm over here like eating healthy, doing my meditation. Excuse me, sir. Okay, so we transfer gut microbiome to each other. This is serious stuff. Okay. So choose someone that wants you enough to do the long haul with you. The whole thing. They will make you a priority. They will make sure you're comfortable during your pregnancy. They will make sure, you, even if you don't decide to have children, some people say, well, what if I don't want children? Doesn't matter. They're still gonna either cause you stress or not every single day. So everything that is important to human beings, our health, our energy, you know, living a good, meaningful life, happiness, family, good time together, prosperity, abundance, all of it is impacted by this one decision. Wow, I ordered the gut microbiome test. It's on the way. I'm so excited for you, Kristen. I'm planning on having my redone. I was going to get it done, but I paused because I'm like, I quit coffee. I want to see if that has an impact on my gut microbiome. So I'm, I can't wait for you guys to get yours. It's amazing. Okay, but did you know that you can be doing all the right things 
and your partner's gut microbiome can be crap and they can be giving you some of theirs. It, it transfers over. So I hope I've made the point that this is not a light decision. A marriage is a beautiful place for inner work. Do you know that inner work done within a marriage is actually more powerful than even a decade of therapy? Why? Because there is no place else other than a relationship, a marriage, where it mimics the where a lot of the original trauma occurred, which is family unit. So relationships are amazing. In, in, the, in the container of a marriage, you can do your inner work together. You can grow together. You can create beautiful art. You can create businesses. You can change the planet. You can create babies. You can have a pretty great life because now you're sharing, right? So you want to marry someone that you can share the stresses of life with, not someone that's causing you stress. My mom used to say, either he's solving your problems or he is your biggest problem. She said that there is no in between. She's like, if he's not solving your problems, he becomes your biggest problem. Because men don't know what to do them them. Men are not wired and don't know what to do with themselves when they're not being useful. That is just, I didn't make the rules. I'm just the one giving the message. Okay. Sorry, I didn't create the millions of years of evolution. It is just what it is. The thing with the, with the Western brains is that we're wired for fairness. Fairness does not work in relationships. So in Eastern cultures where they are wired for relationships, they don't, they don't do fairness. In fact, they will unfairly choose their partner, their own family, and their friends over you. So in the Western culture, we thrive on fairness because we want to, we want to live in a society where we can trust strangers. We can trust people to behave a certain way, right? Which is great. I think there's so much beauty in that. So much beauty in that. That's why I like living here. But in the Eastern culture, they don't give a damn about strangers. They just care. Like their priority is that foundation, that family. Okay. So we have evolved to play these certain roles. And because we evolved to play these certain roles, that's what we are adapted for. Our brains do well when we are doing the things that we have been doing. You can change the game, sure, but then there's consequences. And I always say, I say, it is always okay to not play by the rules. Hey, I'm a rule breaker myself. You guys know I pretty much don't do anything the way it's supposed to be done when it comes to business, right? I do it my way. But I own the consequences of that. Okay, I understand I'm going to have to go first. People are going to look at me like I'm nuts, right? Like I understand the consequences. The thing is the consequences of changing up your diet from the diet that it was to like some other fake diet that's like created in a lab, the consequences are great. And I, I, this is how I teach my children. I say, if you're going to go off the path, it's okay. I encourage it. But know the consequences and know the price. And if you're okay with it, go and do it. I will cheer you on. But know the price. Well, going off course from the way that we've always eaten, well, we're paying the price. As a culture, in the Western society, at least in the United States, it, we're paying the price. Okay? Look at the obesity rate. Look at the heart disease, cancer rate. Like, we're paying the price. As long as you know and you are okay with it, go ahead and pay the price, but know the price. So what happens when we go off course in the way that we've always dated and the way that we've always had relationships? As long as you know what the price is, that's, I say that's okay. But are you doing it with any sort of awareness? Hello, Cafe. Thank you so much for the super chat. She said, hi, gorgeous Mina. When did you quit coffee? And before how long did you drink it? Tons of love from Mexico. Oh, hey, girl. I quit coffee. So I started drinking coffee every day when Alina was born. So eight years ago, I started. 
I was drinking one cup of one cup of coffee a day, and I quit coffee on January first of this year. So I would say I'm about fifty percent done with the withdrawal syndromes. I still, if I go down, okay, here. If I if I put my head down, there's this headache that comes up. <laughs> this like patch of a headache. So if I, I have to, I, I can't make sudden movements still with my head. It's still kind of rewiring itself. I've been sleeping an obscene amount, probably around 15 hours a day. So yeah, I'm still, he, he warned it. And the Caffeine Blues book that I told you guys about, he warned us. He said these were going to be the symptoms if you don't follow his protocol. I chose not to follow his protocol. So I'm paying with the consequences, right? But that's okay. I am a cold turkey type of girl. So, but again, it, it makes my point. If you're going to break the rules, own the consequences. I knew that I was going to take, it's, it was going to be three weeks of hell, but I wanted to do it cold turkey. Wow. Either he is solving your problems or he is the problem. That is just how men are. They want to be useful. They want to be useful. Fairness does not work in relationships. It does not. Relationships are not fair. If you are trying to do the whole fairness thing, which it's normal in the Western culture, our brains are wired for fairness. That's why our legal system works. Our systems and structures work. That's why we are successful in, in producing you know, a capitalist society. Fairness works great under certain conditions. In relationships, fairness does not work. Polarity works. Polarity works. Reciprocal is the word that needs to replace fairness for you. Because at any given time that I take a snapshot of your marriage, okay, it's not going to be fair. So for example, when we got, when we first got married, Irfan and I, and I was bringing my son from my previous marriage and immediately became a stay-at-home mom. And he was providing what was it fair? Who's I mean, no, not from the American viewpoint. Right. And then when I was, you know, pregnant and going through bed rest and all the pregnancy, was it fair? No. OK, maybe I had it. I had the the short end of the stick during this time. But the thing is, if you look at marriage as a 70 year long game, fairness, it, I mean, fair when? On what day? When? Uh, what hour? <laughs> when? Right. So it, it, it's it, this is a long game. Thank you for the super chat, Kay. She said, "You know, what if the guy is stable and respectful, but you're not physically attracted to them at all? How important is physical attraction?" So for the masculine brain. Physical attraction is very important. For the feminine brain, physical attraction, not very uh, important. So I'm answering it this way because which brain is choosing? So in, in our culture, we understand that here's why in the Eastern culture, documentation is an important part of the marriage decision. Because it said that what the woman brings, you can see. Because men, they need many things, but the number one thing that just gets you right in the door is the attraction factor and then other values, right? But number one, attraction. What gets you in the door with the woman? Number one, right off the bat, provider. Well, provider, he's not going to be wearing his money on him. In fact, that would be a red flag if he was, because wealth is what you don't see. If you can see his wealth on him, mm -mm -mm, he's already spent that. It, that's not going to benefit your daughter. <laughs> so the, the, the dads are going to be like, well, we see you've spent your wealth on yourself. Next. So because wealth is what you don't see, they, ha they have to like bring their house documents and their bank accounts and their job. And, you know, they, it, your uncle might drop in, be in the neighborhood of his father's job to go check that out, right? So when you are, are you deciding to be the feminine partner? Then looks are not going to be important. Here's why. Looks when? 
are, are we taking the snapshot at marriage? 10 years in, 20 years in, 40 years in, when? Attracted when? When, when, when are we attracted? Now? Okay, well, like I just said in the beginning of this training, homo sapiens don't decide on like now. This is, this is a long game. Cause like the now decision might be bad and then the genes are already produced in the baby. Now who's gonna provide? So if this is a long game, so attraction when? So when we get married, okay, the way in the Eastern culture, we choose someone we can be attracted to 70 years in. And as a woman, we are attracted to providing and protecting and consistency and integrity and kindness. So what happens if you're attracted to him now and then he gains weight? And let me tell you something. I've been married for 13 years. Ron and I have been married for 13 years. We've put on weight. We've lost weight. We've done different diets together. We've done different fitness programs together. Okay. So, right. There are days where we want to rip each other's clothes off. We're so attracted to each other. And then there's days where we're like snipping at each other and we're just like, mm, not attracted. It's a mo attraction is a moment to moment thing. It's a chemical reaction. It changes. Okay, so make that decision wisely. So smart, this is why I am now Eastern. It's official, girl, yes, ma'am. And, and what you mean by that, Heather, is you're now wiring your brain for the holistic approach. You want the whole thing, right? Like you wanna have the logical side of the brain working, the fairness part when you need it in job situations, but then you also want the polarity, the relational skills, the empathy and relationships, all the things that are required in relationships for successful relationships. Choose who you will be attracted to 70 years in. Yes, because you will not stay the same. I had, I, I, Ifan and I, between the two of us, we've been through two pregnancies, right? I had my son from previously, and then we had two kids. Between the two of us, we've buried three parents. We've dealt with parent illnesses. We've dealt with cancer. We've dealt with heart disease. We've, you know, they, there's a lot. Attraction, like what's attraction? Well, you know what's really attractive? Someone standing by your side. Someone standing by your side, consistently being there for you. Taking care of you when you're sick. I was just sick, I told you guys in the other live stream. My husband was making me soup was combing my hair, he was taking care of me. He was asking me constantly, do you need anything? Can I get you anything? He was making sure I took my medicine. That's attractive. That's sexy. Okay, so this is a long game, babe. It's a long game. Hey, look, I get it. I wanna just go and marry the supermodel looking guy, right? So I can put him on Instagram. But how is that going to help my children? Remember that the person that you marry, it impacts the future of humanity. But, but here's a, here, let me give you guys an exercise that I give my clients. I tell my clients that are kind of going back and forth, oh, he's so cute between the guy that they shouldn't be dating. Here's what I have them do. Okay, this is their punishment. <laughs> that changes everything for them. I tell them, go to Google. Plug in cute children. And I have them print out a, a picture of, of a group of cute kids. And I have them write my grandchildren. And yes, these women are in their 20s and 30s, but I have them write down my grandchildren. And I say, put this on your mirror where you will see this every day. And now stare at that picture and tell me once again, why are you gonna go marry the loser again? Why are we chasing him? And that does it for them. You won't believe how many women are like, Mina, that picture of the grandchildren, that, that's it. Because your decisions impacts them. How stressed you are wondering where he is at 4 a.m. in the morning when you're pregnant already changes your children. 
Do you know that? It already changes. You have now stressed out your children. I gave you an example from my real life. That's how my first marriage was. At 4 a.m. in the morning, I would be getting text messages and calls from friends saying, saw your husband dancing with so-and-so at a party while I'm pregnant, stressed out. So I have been there. This isn't me just like preaching from a high horse. I have been there. And I have sat with the consequences of knowing that my oldest son was born in, in a womb that was extremely highly stressed out. I cried myself to sleep every day. And I wouldn't wish that on anyone. Yes, you said, will your future generations be happy with the decision you made? It is reckless to go for looks. It is reckless. Unless you end up getting it all, right? Like, so the men that I was dating in my rotational dating, all of them I found good looking because they were masculine energy men and masculine energy men to me are good looking. Now there were a couple of, you know, there was this one guy in particular that my mom, that was her favorite. That was her front runner. I was like, mom, you marry him. She was totally into that one. And I thought he was a good looking guy I was dating him. And my sister and my friend was like, how on the planet could you be dating him? Like, how can I not? He's such a nice guy. Look at him. He's so overweight. I'm like, I don't even see it. Like that's, he's a masculine energy man. You don't think he's overweight? Nope. He's a man. What am I going to do with this weight? People gain weight and lose weight all the time. I, I hadn't even noticed. That's the thing. It was so funny to me that my sister and best friend would even think that he was overweight. He's a man. He's supposed to have some meat on him. So it's interesting the things that people have accidentally wired themselves for. The thing is that in the United States, especially, but I mean, this is becoming the norm everywhere now. So America leads. America leads the populations of all other cultures. America is shiny. It's got great marketing. All cultures want to follow the American culture. I grew up hating my culture because I so desperately only wanted to be known as American. I was Pakistani American. I wanted the Pakistani to just drop out. And I just wanted to be American because of the shiny new packaging and the marketing, right? So the way everything is here, it needs to be highly marketable. So if he doesn't look cute, I can't post him on Instagram, oh no. So we're now trying to find someone that we can show off in front of our friends and family members and random strangers on Instagram and TikTok and Facebook versus what genome the human destiny needs, <laughs> the kind of partner you need, and the kind of father that your children need. Screw all that. Does he look hot on Instagram? That's what we're looking at. And that's okay if you own the consequences. As I always say, it is always okay to break the rules. Just know the consequences. Nicole said he's a man. He's supposed to have some meat on him. Yeah, I like I like my men like big and you know, like that's how it's supposed to be. <laughs> he's well fed. That means I'll be wet fed, well fed. My children will be well fed, right? So know that even the things that you notice, the things that you focus on, they're very much coming from a brain that was not designed and primed. It was designed originally, but it was not, it has adapted for a certain type of capitalist success. Nothing wrong with that. But it's just asking yourself, not every job requires a hammer, but all I have is a hammer. So hopefully a hammer will do. No, get another tool. Right? Get another tool. What if your surgeon walked in with a hammer? you know, for um, your LASIK surgery. <laughs> that's the only, I had a LASIK uh, surgery done about four years ago. So that's the example that came up, but right. You'd be like, excuse me, sir. <laughs> Are you sure a hammer is needed for this job? So stop bringing the wrong tools to the job is what I'm saying. Okay. 
So those of you guys that want to dive in deeper, Alchemy and Ascension is happening on January 22nd. There's two ways to join. You can purchase that intensive, intensive separately through the link in the description box, and I'll put in the comments too. Or you can get the Aligned as Femme, and that includes the Alchemy and Ascension. Now, if you get the Alchemy and Ascension and you want to upgrade to Aligned as Femme, there is a code inside of the course dashboard that you can use to get what you paid for the Alchemy applied to the Aligned as Femme. All right. I'll give you guys a couple session, uh, seconds if you guys have any questions that you would like me to answer before I let you guys go. I know it takes, there's a delay, so I'll give you guys a sec. Thank you so much for joining me. This was a really great talk. Nice chat with you guys. I can't wait for this intensive. Hey, babe, I can't wait either. I'm so excited. It's going to be amazing. I'm so, so, so excited. You guys, there's going to be different play shops in there, workshops, play shops. And um, one of the play shops, it's, it, I'm going to lay out actual techniques and things that you can start doing with your brain actual brain stuff that you can start working on, different exercises and different embodiment practices that will start rewiring your brain differently. One of the things you'll notice is even the types of people you notice, the type of angles, the type of conversations will change because you still have those things and those parts in your brain. They've just become dormant because your brain at some point decided, ah, oh, don't need it, lose it. We need this because that's what's needed in the Western culture. So I'm going to give you actual exercises. I'm also in one of the play shops going to put different, um, it's, it's going to be like a schedule that you can put yourself on to rewire yourself with food psychology using um, nutritional anthropology. And you get to decide what you're going to eat or not, but you're going to become uber aware of how that works internally for you, how your brain tricks you into eating things that you're not supposed to be eating. And then it's your decision. So that's a part of it. It's going to be amazing. I mean, you're going to have everything you need to start the whole year working on your brain and your embodiment, your energy. I'm, I'm really excited about it. How do you transfer microbiome? So the study of microbiome is still relatively in infancy, but the way that they've discovered is that it, microbiome hops on. It's bacteria, right? It's, it's living bacteria. It just, it just transfers. It hops on. So you can be sitting on the bus next to someone and you're exchanging microbiome with them. But if you're living with someone day in and day out, that's, that's, a, lot of, that's a lot of exchanging. Hey, Rhonda. Thank you, babe. Yes, Eastern alignment. Yes, babe. So it just basically transfers, right? Just like stress. With what I know about stress alone, I, I question so many people's decision to stay in struggle love because they're literally making themselves sick. Honestly, and, and I'm not gonna make decisions for anyone else, but the kind of person that I am, sukun is the Arabic word for inner peace. It is such a high value in my life. In fact, I'm not embarrassed to admit this, that I actually value peace above family. I, I actually value it above everything. I know that might sound weird to some of you guys, but I actually value peace above all other things on the planet. All other things. So I am just not available for it. Some people value family more than stress or sakun, right? So maybe they'll stay with family members or friendships or whatever, just out of loyalty. That is not me at all. And it's taken me 41 years to accept this about myself. It's all, it was always there. It was just kind of like, don't let people find this out about yourself. But the truth is, if you came and you studied my life and our life is just simply a collection of different decisions we've made based on our priorities, you would quickly see that Mina does not value anything above peace, inner peace. That is the number one priority. And everyone that loves me knows that, that 
this bitch is so nuts <laughs> that she will let go of everything if she doesn't have peace. <laughs> Everyone knows this about me. So I just don't have that place of nonsense in my life. It, it's just how God made me. I, I value peace before everything else. Definitely understandable. Okay, so you guys get me. Not weird at all. Okay, thank you, thank you. Linda said, hi, Mina. Thank you for helping on my healing journey. Beautiful, Linda. I'm so glad, babe. So what do you value? What is your number one priority? I feel like the struggle has been glorified. Oh, girl, yes, yes. It's like almost like this, but like badge, right? But what is struggle? But just a clever name for stress. No, mm -mm. I want to glorify peace, <laughs> ease, grace, being okay, being enough. That's, let's glorify that. I left my struggle job last week. The stress was overwhelming and I had to let it go. Sakun is my word for 2022. This is my priority. So my job has to go. Yes, because a job is such a momentary blip. But your health, that has consequences. Like living with stress, people don't realize the consequences of living with chronic stress. We, we don't, we've never done it this way. We used to have moments of stress and being, you know, not to glorify the homo sapien lifestyle or hunter gant. They were living in extreme conditions. We are so lucky and so blessed. Would not want to trade places at all. <laughs> However, they had moments of stress and then they went back to being with being at ease. They didn't have as much of the artificially created stress that we have now. And we must understand this. Peace by any means, Mina. I say this all the time, but I didn't realize I wasn't fully following it in my career and life. You are worthy. And the thing is, like, if you look at study the American lifestyle, it's so devastatingly sad. Like it's so depressing that they, you know, we're wired to spend our entire lives doing these things, sitting in school and then sitting in this cubicle and being in this constant stress and letting go of our health only to have the healthcare system then completely fail us because it's a, it's a short time kind of patch kind of thing, which is great, right? For that, the United States is number one. In surgery, we are number one, right? We've got all these advancements. But to fix chronic stress from like 40 years of sitting in a cubicle? No, we don't have a pill for that. We don't. And the sooner you realize that there is no pill for you being in a struggle relationship for 20 years or sitting in a, in a job that you hate, that stresses you out for 30 years, there is no pill for that. It, it's it's depressing, actually, if you really look at how many people spend their life that way. And then they hope that there's going to be some like trophy in the end of life. There isn't. There isn't. That was it. That The process, that whole journey, that was it. There's always a price to pay for everything. And it's okay to pay the price as long as you know what it is and you're okay with it. So we have to as human beings, as homo sapiens, as women, as mothers, as grandmothers, like we have to go back to our roots and ask ourselves, is this worth it? To me, again, I don't even, I don't place relationships about peace. So if I was ever in a relationship that was stressing me out routinely, like everyone has stress once in a while, right? And you work through it together. But if, it, if my relationship was stressing me out every day, you best believe that it would be over. And I, and I would do it with love. I would say, I love you. This has been amazingly well. It served us well. We had this beautiful life. We are now causing stress to each other. And you know how allergic I am to stress because stress ages us. It kills us. And I don't want to kill you. I love you. And therefore, I will let you go. And hopefully, we can both have peace. Like, that is literally what I would say. <laughs> because it's not worth it to me. The third eye meditation in your course rewired me somehow. Can't wait for more in your intensive. Babe, yes, that is intense. Did I tell you what happened to me when I stopped doing that meditation? 
Oh, I have chills. I don't even know if I can say it. You made me remember that. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Let me see if I like, if I can even share it. Okay. <laughs> so the third eye meditation she was talking about, I started doing that years ago. And then, oh my God, I need to like calm myself down. And then I found this other new meditation and I was like, oh, let's try this meditation. And I stopped doing the third eye meditation for a while. And I didn't realize, but like that year, like my peace and like certain things started unraveling just a little bit. Like it was like just a little bit, not like big for me to say, oh my God, something's different, but enough to start causing a little bit of unease. You know what I mean? I didn't notice. I kept doing the new meditation stop doing the third eye meditation. And then I woke up one day just feeling really off. And I noticed that like my children were like, it almost felt like I had gone like four years back with everything. It just felt like a downgrade. I was like, something's off. The children don't feel right. The phone's acting weird. I feel off. So this is the time where usually everything changes for me when I do this. So what I did was I was like, God, angels, Excuse me, sir, everyone. Uh, what happened? I, I seem to have entered the old paradigm again. What's going on? Please send me a sign and make it, make it really, really clear because obviously something weird is going on. Fix me. So I said this and stuff started happening right afterwards, except I was like, I had said, send me a clear sign and it was a clear sign. I'll tell you what it was, but I wasn't getting it. <laughs> until like two weeks later when I go to see a friend and she's um she does Akashic readings she's the one that did my Akashic reading I mentioned it to her and she helped me figure it out so let me tell you what happened I, I can't believe I'm sharing the story so I'm doing my makeup and I know I look down and I notice in my garbage can I have a, this little garbage can where I throw like q-tips and things right I notice that there is a picture of an eye staring at me just a picture of an eye. So I just noticed, I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I go about my day and then I notice an eye over here. And then my daughter comes and says, I found this eye sticker, just one eye, not two eyes, just one eye. Okay, now this is like three times. I'm driving, I look up, billboard, eye, just one eye. Come home, my son's like, mom, have you noticed there's a picture of an eye on money? Huh? Like, what? So now this happened for two weeks. I just keep seeing one eye. It's in books. It's, I'm watching a movie. I pointed it out to my husband and he's like, no, he's, he's giving me the scientific thing that you're filtering out all the instances where you're not seeing an eye. But then he starts seeing it. He's like, okay, this is weird. I'm seeing the eye too. So it keeps happening and I can't figure it out. So I'm like, is someone watching me? Like an eye, like what does an eye mean? Just one eye. So I'm journaling on it, can't figure it out. I'm sitting with my friend from, uh, what's her company? Evolve, Evolve Alchemy, I think it is. Her, her, at her company place, at her store. And I'm telling her, I'm like, babe, you know, she's a spiritual person. Like she does these Akashic readings. I'm like, babe, what does an eye mean? And she's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, I keep seeing this damn eye everywhere. I told her the story. I'm like, I keep saying, she's like, it's not necessarily that the sign means anything is what does the sign mean to you? She's like, what does this one I mean to you? And I'm like, I, I'm like, I, I, third eye. Oh my God. I used to do this third eye meditation and then I stopped. And then she's like, go back to the third eye meditation. So I started doing that meditation again. And back on track. So when I asked for the sign, I, I guess the universe was going to like play with me. I was like, God, please make it clear. I'm slow. Okay. But I, I wasn't getting it. <laughs> so anyways, you said that right now about the third eye and made me think about it. So the third eye meditation, um, it's in a lot of places, um, but I think it's, is it in the love lights? Kibibi, do you remember where you saw it? I know I've shared it many, many times in many programs. It's definitely the sacred uh, feminine spiritual 
If you guys want, we we're, we have a different meditation that we'll be doing in alchemy. I'm teaching you guys the calm your DNA meditation to get you out of st- uh, uh, fight or flight. But I can also do teach you guys this one in there if you want. You're creeping me out, Mina. Yes. I know. Sorry. I know I was creeped out too with that damn eye, but it was just the universe saying, go back to the third eye meditation. It's like, oh, okay. Sorry. I asked. And then I forgot. (laughs) So yeah, the universe has a funny way of sending us signs. Um, The third eye meditation in it. Oh yeah. You already talked about that. Yes. Yep, it's in the love light. Yeah, so Nicole, I have this collection of meditations. I think it's like 17 meditations. They're all five minutes and under. And in the love lights meditation course, and that course is just like, it's like $17. You can get in the basic babe bundle. If you have the basic babe bundle, you should have it. And what I've done is I've put 15 to 17 different templates. And your job is to try them all out, see which ones you like, and then do those ones that you like. Some of them are very specific, like there's one for forgiveness. So you do that one just when you need to forgive someone or forgive yourself. But you can actually even combine three of them and do like a three part, 15 minute. Uh, I wanted to keep it easy because I don't I don't meditate in a complicated way. Uh, on most days, it's just like a five to 10 minute thing for me. But the consistency and the compound effect is what helps. So it doesn't have to be complicated. Okay. All right, ladies, thank you so much. This was so much fun hanging out with you. I'll see you guys in Alchemy and Ascension. I've linked it in the description box and I'll put it in the chat and as uh, in the comments as well. All right, babe. Bye. See you in the next one.